will be recorded. Um, all right, with that being said, first item on the agenda is to turn things over to Mark Keener and Dr. Hartzell. Ho to come forward this evening, Zoe, if you could join us at the podium. Thank you. It's our honor this evening to have the opportunity to recognize one of our junior student athletes at South Fayette Township High School. Um, Zoe Poe is joined this evening by her father, Mr. David Poe. Um, she is the daughter of Mr. David Poe and Mrs. Lori Poe. Um, Zoe is our girls triple A Whippeal champion in the girls 500 yard freestyle swimming her personal best time of four minutes and 58 seconds and 27 seconds. I will say that it's considered a middle distance event, but it's, um, it's a full sprint. It's a full sprint event. Um, Zoe has incredible endurance. Um, she's also joined this evening by Coach Todd Clark. Zoe's a fierce competitor. She's a multi-sport athlete here at South Fayette. She's academically inclined. We know this. She's a coachable young lady. She's self-disciplined. And most importantly, she's polite. Uh, she's involved in a plethora of activities here, um, not limited to student government, Interact, Glow Run. Um, she's also in the National Honor Society. She's in cross country, and she's also in track. Outside of school, she's participated in more triathlons than we're able to count. And she's also involved in many honors and advanced placement courses. Zoe wants to continue swimming in college, although still not decided which college. She's got a lot of time yet to decide, but we wanted to have the opportunity to congratulate her publicly, to recognize her um, and thank her for all the pride that she brings to us here at South Fayette. So on behalf of um, all of South Fayette Township High School, the board, our administrative team, our faculty, and our student body, I'd like to recognize her. Um, please join us in congratulating Zoe Poe. Zoe, congratulations. Stay here for a minute. Mr. Keener. Yeah, just hold this uh, real quick. Zoe, when do you sleep? <laughs> do you sleep, I guess, is the better question. Probably doesn't. Uh, just real quick, want to echo what Dr. Hartzell said about Zoe. Um, she's quiet, but but a fierce competitor. Uh, she's hardworking. She's very humble, which is what I love about her. Uh, she doesn't complain about anything. She goes and she goes about her business. She works really hard. She doesn't, you know, she's there every day. Yes, coach. Yes, coach. What do you need me to do? Um, it's a credit to her and her family for the values they've instilled in, in her. Uh, I look forward to her next year, you know, defending her championship and hopefully adding maybe one or two more championships to that. And uh, just want to say that she's a, she's a perfect example of a student athlete. Uh, her parents, her coaches, her teammates, and everyone in this district should be very proud to have her represent us. And, and we definitely are. So congratulations, Zoe. Zoe, is there anything you'd like to say? No, you is there anything you would like to say? You have an opportunity. <laughs> no? <laughs> okay. At this time, Mr. Keener and I have the honor to continue with another recognition, another very special recognition for our high school and for our school district. We're joined here by our entire um, girls basketball team, the Whippeal Girls 5A Basketball Championship team this evening, our PIAA runner-up champion team, um, joined by Coach Brian Bennett, Coach Stasco, and Coach Sarah McMurtry. Unfortunately, Coach Del Rey was unable to join us this evening, but we are certainly keeping him in our thoughts and prayers this evening. This team is one that we've enjoyed watching uh, play this season. Very exciting to watch them play. I think most importantly, when Mr. Keener and I had the opportunity to sit back and reflect about this team, this is a team that was 
unselfish. They represented our school district and our high school with a true sense of pride and a sense of togetherness. Um, they played with a tremendous amount of grit and determination. And as we had the opportunity to discuss, they kept us on our toes every ounce of each game. And it was so exciting and heartwarming at the same time to watch them play and watch them grow and evolve, not only this season, but the past few seasons to see this. And it was inspiring um, to be able to watch this team evolve over the last couple of years. And I think that as a group of young ladies and a female myself, you are an inspiration to watch together. And I can't wait to see what the following few seasons bring to South Fayette and bring to all of you. And for those of you that are going on to play in the future, I wish you nothing but the best. You have represented okay, so you have my love. with a true sense of tradition, pride, and excellence. And that's something that we are so extremely grateful for. Mr. Keener. Uh, just... Uh... Wanted to thank the girls and the coaches. What an unbelievable journey that they took us on this year, the past couple of years, honestly. Back to back Woodville Championships and the first ever appearance in the state championship game for our girls basketball team. Uh, I can't emphasize how much these, this is such a great group of kids. Uh, you can tell how much they care about each other when they play on the floor, but you should see them off the floor. They do everything together, which makes them, that's what makes them successful. Uh, they're hard, they're hardworking, they never miss any workouts. Kudos to the coaches and players for that both. Uh, it, for me, it was, it was an honor just to be a small piece of this journey, you know, and help them uh, accomplish almost every goal they wanted to. But, uh, you know, came up a little bit short, but there's only one team that's happy at the end of the year. And, and I'll never forget that day. Um, you know, I've had a lot of good experiences in, 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 uh, in sports, but that was one of the best I've had. I get a little, I'm getting emo more emotional as I get older. So I, they almost made me cry. So I had to run out of the locker room because, you know, it's just, it's such how much I, I enjoyed watching those kids. And I knew that that was the last time that we would see that team play. And that was a special team. And, uh, but I think we have some special players coming up and we're going to have some more special teams from this, from this program as well. Um, it's tough. Like before last year, we were the hunters, you know, our team was the hunters, but now we're the hunted and it's, Kudos to the coaches and players for being prepared for that because there's no days off when you're the hunter. You know, uh, everyone's going to give you your best effort, and and you're going to. It's going to be hard to look, go back and find games where we weren't the most prepared team on the floor. So that's kudos to our coaches and our players. So look forward to to the next few years. The future is bright, and uh, just want to say thank you for the, the ride you took me on. So thank you, guys. Ladies, please stand. Congratulations. Look at Mr. Harrigan. Coach Bennett, do you want to say anything? Put you on the spot, uh, spot for a reason. We, we didn't even mention have? all the individual accolades that we that this team got, but right. individual accolades lead to team accolades as well. So, and well, I know we have the state player of the year among us do. here, right? I heard that today. That's Maddie, right? Yep. Um, I just want to thank the uh, the board and the administration for recognizing this group of kids. Um, I think you've heard it from from two different individuals, but I want to echo what they're saying. It, this is a special group of kids. It, it was a pleasure to drive here every day. Um, this this wasn't a job for me. It, it was being part of a, a family, and um, just can't thank the kids enough. And um, you know, we, we just truly appreciate all the support South Pat's given us. Well, on behalf of the board, I'd like to thank you, Coach Bennett, and your assistants and all of the girls and all the parents for the wonderful year they gave us. Uh, I followed every game. And as far as I'm concerned, these, these girls are the state champs right here. And I won't say anything more about that. So let's just leave it. Thank, thank you. you. You are the state champs in my view, in my mind. So thank you very much for everything you did. Okay. Well, thank you all for coming. This is the 
point in the meeting where we start talking about boring business stuff. So for those of you who are inclined to want to stay and listen to that, you're more than welcome to do so. But on the other hand, I'm sure these girls and students and parents have other things they might like to do tonight. So thank you once again for coming and congratulations again, everyone, Zoe and all the girls on the team. We appreciate it. Coaches, thank you. Okay, with that, um, Brian, we can move on. Uh, I guess it's Steve and uh, Nathan. Want to talk to us about spending money? Is that right? <laughs> yes, we go from champions to spending money. I don't know how that happens. Um, anyway, good evening, everybody. Um, is what we're going to do is just kind of explain a little bit of a process of what we have on the agenda tonight to replace the um condenser unit uh at the pool unit so i'm really going to turn this over to ethan um and let him do a little bit of the explanation as he's been the one more heavily involved in taking care of this good, good evening everyone uh, my name is ethan uh Chirakis. i'm the maintenance manager here at south fayette school district and uh thank you steve um we have a uh a rooftop unit it's an hvac unit at the middle school, it handles the, uh, the swimming pool. Uh, it conditions the air um, during the winter months. Uh, it keeps it keeps it tempered. Uh, in the summer months, it's a dehumidifier and air conditioning unit. Uh, we've had a, a setback here in the, in the last uh, few weeks where our compressor unit, it's a, it's a key component of this of this uh, Dectron unit, uh, has has failed. Um, so it's not repairable. So we did reach out to uh, a couple of vendors, uh, Rennick Brothers, uh, and another one that has worked on uh, on this on this particular unit. Uh, we did hear back from Rennick Brothers, and uh, we have uh, several quotes uh, for for its uh, number one for its complete replacement. It was uh, two hundred seventy eight thousand eight hundred and seventy dollars, uh, and that is more or less. 45 to 50 weeks out just to just to obtain the unit. Uh, this the unit that we do have on our middle school. Uh, it's over the years, our maintenance team has maintained it very well. Uh, so it's not in, in complete disrepair. However, it is 20 years old. So uh, moving forward to uh, a second quote that uh, Rennick Brothers said that had come uh, come to us with for the compressor replacement alone was $27,970. Uh, at that time, Steve and I had another conversation and uh, we called uh, um, Rennick Brothers representatives in uh, into our office and uh, we had a face-to-face -face sit down meeting and discussed options as far as uh, what other options we have compressor wise uh, to, to maintain this unit for another year or two to buy some time and and, uh, and continue its its efficient use because it does create a big issue in the summertime months with a high humidity level. Uh, and they came back with another quote of $18,730. Uh, and that that basically is uh, reclaiming the refrigerant that's up there already, uh, replacing the broken compressor and the broken oil switch recharge and start up and check for proper operation. Um, by them, we, we explored other compressors. For example, uh, uh, well, the fact is the Dectron unit compressor was much more expensive than the Copeland unit, which is readily available in Ohio. Uh, it's exactly the same specification wise. The only difference is it's not proprietary to Dectron, which is the manufacturer of the, art, of the rooftop unit. So uh, we're here today to, to ask for that $18,730 to, uh, to get this, this work done. 
Uh, as I said, the components are, are, are available over here in Ohio, and uh, we can, we can uh, obtain them fairly quickly through our vendor and get this work done. Um, do we, does anyone have any questions? Nathan, what type of warranty comes with the Copeland? Uh, the warranty Copeland, I believe they gave us a one-year warranty. And this is a CoStar vendor. It's a CoStar price. I think uh, that it's on the agenda. Uh, minutes. Any I, other questions? Yes, I, I have an overarching question. And I guess it goes toward um, looking down the road toward construction projects. And I know there are things that need to be done in that natatorium. So the question is, where are we going with this rooftop unit? So when does that really need to be replaced? And uh, should it be considered as part of some other major overhauls in that natatorium? I, I, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not in there. I haven't been in there recently. I don't know, but I know there have been mentioned that there's been some yes, issues I'm, there in the past. We should pretty, we should focus on this unit it is 20 years old. Uh, I think it's the second unit that's been, uh, that's been servicing that pool. The first unit was uh, 1990, 1990, I believe. This has been in service since 2004, I believe. It's more or less it's 20 years old. It's 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 reached it's reaching the end of its economic life. So I mean, uh, this fix will will prolong its its uh, its, its lifespan until we we can move forward and uh, speak further about budgeting and, and and planning for this. Can you give me a general idea or? Steve, or both of you, as to what else needs to be done in that natatorium in the next several years, besides this rooftop unit. Steve, you're smiling. Do you know the answer? Or this You don't want to give me the bad news. I, I think we need to understand that, or at least I want to understand it. All right. Well, I'll, I'll kind of give you the, the rundown of, of, of the pool itself. Obviously, uh, not only with the HVAC unit uh, being 20 years old, um, the pool deck itself needs is going to need some work done to it um underneath the pool uh with all of the chemical feeders and everything we have down there um it's it's nearing its life um we've replaced a lot of different things and a lot of different components throughout the years which we can do as we budget things um when you start getting into the pool um i know in talking with mr keener you know our pool is a, a, a six lane pool. Most pools right now are eight lanes. So when you get into looking at the pool, um, the other thing that is a really, really large problem in the pool is there is no room for spectators. Um, we have a balcony up top. You can fit maybe a hundred people there um, and that's about it. So when you have any type of big tournament or something like that, it's really difficult to have a lot of spectators there. So um, when you wanna, look at things in a big picture and in the long run, and you're looking at construction, that's something you really need to consider and look at in the long run. For yeah. right now, I think for what we wanna do, we wanna be able to uh, replace this compressor, get it up and running. Um, with it not running right now, it's running right now and the pool is open um, and we're able to maintain everything right now, but when it starts to get warm outside, we will, start to have more issues moving forward. So it's really important for right now to get the compressor replaced and get it up and running. Long-term, if you're looking at something uh, to replace the entire HVAC units there at $278,000, you know, that's something that we have to look at long-term and something that we have to budget for or do for construction if the pool is gonna stay there. Uh, well, but that's my question. Do you spend $278,000 on a compressor if you need major renovations elsewhere? Do you need, if you need to go from six lanes to eight lanes, if you need a new pool deck, if you need to rip the pool out, that's major money. That's a major construction project. So that raises the issue to me is, do you build a new natatorium somewhere else? I, I don't know the answer to that. Whether there's room enough to expand that to eight lanes, whether there's room enough to add more bleachers in that existing space. What what I'm thinking when I hear two hundred seventy eight thousand dollars just for a compressor is no no that's okay well, that's for the entire no, unit the entire unit itself would be and I'm sorry I'm sorry the entire unit yeah so just replacing the compressor ourselves which we're asking for right yeah, now yeah I, I, I get it yeah I made a mistake I'm talking about the rooftop unit yes. two hundred seventy eight thousand dollars 
Yes, but okay. we can like replace the compressor right now. We're going to get more life expectancy out of it. I understand, but you're talking about $278,000 for the rooftop unit. Mm -hmm. You're telling me we need more bleacher space. You're telling me we need the pool deck replaced. You're telling me we need eight lanes instead of six lanes. Again, not next year or the year after, but down the road. Right. Those are all questions I think that have to be considered by the board at some point in the administration as to what do we do with that yes unit that that is i don't correct. know the answer yeah and that's something that we discuss moving down the road as far as what we want to do with that and then in addition with the budget and planning is that lag time be for the whole two hundred yeah. seventy eight thousand? that might be good to mention it i mean when you're looking at 40 weeks for uh, a delivery of a unit which is going to be kind of typical anytime we replace units right now they're they're usually six to eight months out to replace even just a regular rooftop unit anywhere. So uh, you have to do a lot of planning ahead, you know, in order to replace the unit. So, um, but yes, Len, moving forward is something that we should discuss, you know, as far as construction goes, but again, that's down the road. Yeah, I understand. I just, again, I'm just thinking ahead. I mean, Lena, you had kids who were swimmers, right? So you know a little bit more about that building and maybe you have some comments or thoughts about what I'm saying, talking about. So, so my last child that swam there was in 2011. And, and even then it was really difficult and challenging with the chloramines and like all kinds of other things that were going on. So I appreciate um, as a family of swimmers, like how difficult that that was. And I can only imagine as, as things have aged, you know, since then. So I appreciate um even a conversation about that, I'm sure swim parents would as well. And we use that so much for kids with our uh, swim lessons, the aqua club, you know, there's a lot. Yeah, I come through here some, some weekends and I see people in there all the time yes. on Saturdays and yes. Sundays, and I don't know what they're doing, but they're there. Yep. yep. And, and, and Len too, I mean, if you want additional information, Todd Clark is here. Um, and he's our swim coach. He's also the aquatics director as well. So okay, good. if he wants to add anything more, Onto that, um, as far as everything that goes, I, I appreciate Clark, that. Thank you. Director, swimming coach. Um, I just was in the room for Zoe, and I knew the discussion was tonight, so I thought I'd hang around for a little bit. Um, in my, I've been doing this thirty years. In my opinion, it's really a strategic decision um, to upgrade the pool. It's going to be two to five million dollars, depending on how you do it, or you make a decision how long you're going to nickel and dime it. Um, the maintenance staff is unbelievable. They really know that pool. They know the units. They know when it breaks down. So they do a great, great job, but they're piecing it together year after year. But it, it is a strategic decision from the district whether you want to go to the next level. You don't really make a six-lane pool, an eight-lane pool. You, you just get a whole new, whole new pool, a whole new property. Thank you. Well, what's the, just so I know, and again, I don't want to prolong this. What's the significance in, in terms of meets and, and kids with six lanes versus eight lanes? Um, it's more of a story of keeping up with the Joneses. Everybody that builds a new pool builds an eight laner. It's not really something you do in this part of the, of the country. You don't build six lane pools anymore. You build eight lane pools in school districts. I remember when we built that, and I've been on the board a long time, six lanes, we were state of the art then because we had Correct. six lanes. It's, it and I know some of our neighboring districts who are bigger didn't have six lane pools, and we were, they, we were the envy of them. Correct. It's a great pool. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. I appreciate them. Any questions from the board? I didn't mean to dominate the conversation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next item here for us to determine to do is to approve an amendment to tonight's agenda, agenda. So we needed a, a motion to approve um, the recommendation to purchase a new compressor and oil switch and related work for the middle school pool rooftop unit through CoStar's vendor, Rennick Brothers at a total cost of 18,730. And we also need to approve an amendment to the agenda to um, hire call in substitute teachers and support personnel pending receipt of required documents. May I have a motion to amend the agenda to include these two items for voting tonight? So moved. You moved by Paul. Second. Second by Teresa. All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Aye. All right, motion carries. Next, we have the consent agenda. 
And uh, we need a motion to approve the business items. Those are items one, two, and three. May I have a motion to approve items one, two, and three under the consent agenda? So moved. Moved by Teresa. Second. Second by Lena. All in favor? Uh, questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, at this time, we will suspend our business to hear from residents and or taxpayers. The board will hear comments from residents and or taxpayers related to items appearing on the agenda for action by the board. The board will receive comments from residents and or taxpayers on topics that do not appear on the agenda for action by the board at the conclusion of the agenda prior to adjournment. The time limit for comments shall not exceed three minutes. The board will not respond to questions during the session, but will only hear comments as per policy number six meetings adopted April 26, 2022. Are there any comments from residents or taxpayers at this time? Do you have anything from the- I have not via email at this time. No emails, all right. Thank you. At this point, we will turn the meeting over to Dr. Miller, who is in Cyberland. Are you there? I am, and I submitted um, my board update um, and board report. Um, those should be in your binder, but it was a recap on League of Innovative Schools, and that's where Dr. Deichler and I am now, um, and we are looking forward to visiting Talladega School District tomorrow um, and learning some of their best practices. Um, so uh, your report that is in your packet really just identifies Digital Promise, League of Innovative Schools, the history that South Fayette um, has with this organization and the learning that has gone on and all of the leadership we've been able to do nationwide because of the organization. Um, so thank you so very much. And thank you. At this point in time, we will ask our student representative for her report. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. There are many notable student uh, achievements and accomplishments that I would like to share with everyone today. Um, I found that going in order from athletic to the arts to academic was easier for me and for everyone to follow. So I'll just continue that. Um, in the athletic achievements category, um, there was a campus-wide parade to celebrate all the winter athletic and academic teams on their amazing seasons this past week. The girls cross country team won the TSTCA championship for the third time on the 15th. And uh, to close off an amazing athletic season, many sports, including baseball and basketball, held their banquets and senior recognition nights. And most notably, the high school had a track and field day to raise more money for Minithon and the Four Diamonds organization. In the fine arts department, South Fayette Township School District did receive, did receive the 2023 Best Communities for Music Education designation by the NAMM Foundation this past week. The high school jazz ensemble visited the historic RCA Studio B to record and learn about jazz music and the industry. And finally, the SF Little Green Machine and orchestra and band all went to Nashville, Tennessee at the beginning of the month for the Grand Ole Opry. In the academic department, students recently went on the Technology Science Association field trip to Seven Springs, and a couple students did also place in their respective events. The Future Business Leaders of America Club also recently went on a field trip to Hershey, PA, and many students placed as state finalists in events such as insurance and risk management, social media strategies, and business ethics. State finalists do advance to the national level competition. AP exams start next week on May 1st and continue through uh, May 12th. So students are preparing for those exams this week and we wish them the best of luck. And finally, Minithon is right around the corner and the honors business management class is excited to welcome students to join in on the 12 hour dance marathon this Friday. And it's all worth it when it's for the kids. At the other schools, the elementary school students, particularly the kindergartners, used chalk to draw us beautiful pictures outside the high school entrance. It was definitely something that brightened my day at 7.20 a.m. The second graders at the elementary school created and finished golf courses that represented their individual personalities as part of their curriculum and were able to present them to other students in the school gym. Um, the fifth graders at the intermediate school participated in an idiom day where students dressed up as various idioms and had their peers guess which idiom they were. 
And finally, at the middle school for the first time ever, a South Vegas student is competing at the National Math Counts competition. So congratula congratulations, Eric. And with that, I think I covered everything. Thank you. Well, thank you for that comprehensive report. That's very thorough. And I'm sure you put a lot of work into that. Do you visit the various buildings to, to watch some of these things so you can do these reports? Um, I'm usually at the middle school for my sister's events, but I try to make my way around. Mostly I pick up from word of mouth and put that into a report. Well, well thank you very much. Thank you. We have one more month here. And then, but, so we appreciate what you've done for us. Thank you. Okay. Um, any questions? For our student representative, no? All right, business office at the committee meeting of the whole on April 18th, we approved uh, the item that's listed on the agenda with respect to the purchase of uh, a number of student laptops. So now we need, um, we're going to address the next um, five items on the agenda. The first is to recommend board approval of the 2021-22 school district audit as prepared by HOSAC, SPEC, Musil, and Wood. The second item is to approve uh, the Mock and Hop Benefits Group to prepare the biannual actuarial valuation report for OPEB at a cost not to exceed $6,000. The third item is to recommend approval for the district to offer a Section 125 flexible spending account to district employees through American Fidelity beginning with the 2022-2023 school year, there is no cost to the district or to any employees. Number four, the superintendent and director of finance recommend the approval to renew a five-year agreement with Fitney Bowes for the lease of a SendPro P-Series, Connect Plus SendPro P-Series meter, whatever that is. I think that's a postage meter, Brian. Okay, effective September 1, 2023. And the last item uh, we just discussed, Superintendent, Director of Finance, Brian Tony, and the Facilities Director, Steve Timmons, recommend board approval to purchase a new compressor and oil switch and related work for the middle school pool rooftop unit through CoStar's vendor, Rennick Brothers, at a total cost of $18,730. May I have a motion to approve items one through five, please? So moved. Moved by Joe. Second. Second by Paul. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We next move to personnel. Uh, first noting that at last week's meeting, uh, we approved uh, a number of items, uh, 14 items. They're all listed here. I'm not going to read them again. They're all on the agenda. And so uh, we're going to move on to page three. I'm sorry, page five of the agenda. I'm sorry, page six for some new motions approval tonight. Uh, the first motion under personnel is to um, approve the leave of absence request of a grade two teacher. And that grade two teacher would be Katie Weber in the elementary school effective for the first semester of 2022-2023 school year. The second item on the agenda is to uh, that we need to approve here under personnel is to approve certain EPRs. We have an EPR nurse uh, for the academic team competition that is Misty Menarchek. We have the intermediate school lines of steel running coaches that will be Wesley Chapel and Angela Johnson. And we have the intermediate, the elementary school lines of steel running coaches, um, Jessica Lipinski, Carolyn Downey, Sarah Nee, Jennifer Reinhardt, Elizabeth Frambus, and Alexis DeArmond. And the third item for approval here is to approve the following call as needed substitute teachers and support personnel for the 2022-2023 school year. That would be Aaron Timko, PK to four special education, pending receipt of required documents. Preta Paranjepi, clerical at the rate of $11 per hour, student monitor at the rate of $10 per hour, food service at the rate of 925 an hour, pending receipt of required documents. May I have a motion to approve those three items, please? So moved. Yes, moved by Joe. Second. Second by Lena. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Next is education. And again, last week, we approved five items that are listed on the, that are listed on the agenda. 
I don't will not read them again. Um, so if we turn to the next page. Uh, no, that's it. We don't have anything else to approve tonight in education, do we? Okay, so next is transportation. No items to discuss. Uh, athletics, no items to discuss. Construction, no items to discuss. Miscellaneous, no miscellaneous items to discuss. So now we will suspend our business again to hear from residents and the taxpayers. As indicated earlier, the board will hear comments from residents and their taxpayers. The time limit will be not to exceed three minutes. The board will not respond to questions during this session, but only hear public comment. This is your opportunity to comment on anything that is either on the agenda or is not on the agenda. Are there any comments? Cindy, do you have anything? I have none via email. Okay. Solicitor's report. I'll keep the streak going. There are no items to discuss. Okay, then. Board committees. Uh, I have nothing to report tonight. Board Foundation, Paul. I'm sorry, the South Ed Foundation, Paul. So other than update our letting everybody know that the golf outing is scheduled for the 17th of July, Hickory Heights, we are looking for uh, participants to golf as well as sponsors. Uh, I wasn't able to attend the meeting. So Dr. Miller, do you have anything else from the foundation? So I would just say that we are wrapping up details in terms of some of the different prizes, um, baskets, and some of the logistics um, that we've been talking about. But for the most part, um, it is we need the golfers and we need the sponsors. So word of mouth is great. And anyone who wants to donate to any of the raffle baskets, I'd be more than happy to put those together for for all of us, administrative team, board, um, and anyone interested. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you, Paul. PSBA Legislative Committee, Lena. Thank you. Yeah, so I did share the liaison edition with everyone um, and gave you an opportunity to view that in advance. One area I'd like to kind of ask you to pay a little bit of attention to is there's a webinar that is scheduled for May 17th that is complimentary for board uh, members, and it does focus on um, the School Safety and Security Board Report. So what should be expected in that report so that when we are given, excuse me, that information just to give us an understanding of the information that we should be receiving to understand basically uh, the issues around the school safety and security. So um, it's a webinar that's one hour long from 12 to 1. Um, you can register through the link that I've provided for you as well. Again, that date is May the 17th. So, thank, thank you, you. Lena. Um, Parkway West, Tom is not here tonight. Uh, Michelle, do you have anything from Parkway to report? So I would just say that it was an absolute pleasure for um, me to be present while our NHS students at Parkway were identified those um, entering NHS and then also those who received their cords um, who are outgoing seniors and who will graduate. It was a wonderful ceremony in the afternoon last week. And I was very pleased to be there on behalf of the school district and to uh, celebrate our students. Thank you. And congratulations to our students, of course. Shasta, Joe, I know you were speaking. I saw your picture on Twitter. So give us an update on well, there's, there's what one happened update. and there's... what it is you said and never talked about. So I would like to hear that. Thanks. Uh, this past Saturday morning uh, in South Point, uh, Dr. Hartzell, Dr. Miller, Mrs. Hannah, and I were on hand to honor two of our Lion learners uh, that were recipients of Shazda Awards this year. Uh, the first was senior Connor Delaney, a uh, very impressive young man who has an interest in pursuing a career in welding. And the second recipient was Brianna Williams, also a senior here at South Fayette, who is pursuing uh, her love of animals in a career of zoology and marine biology. So uh, both uh, tremendous representatives of the high school and South Fayette in general. So it was an honor to be there with them. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate it. All right. We have come to the end of our agenda. Uh, unless there is anything that any board member wishes to discuss in executive session, um, we will move to adjourn. So does any board member or administrator have anything they need to discuss in executive session? No? All right then, at this point in time, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn the meeting. 
So moved. Moved by Joe. Second. Okay. Second by Project. We'll give one to you tonight. Okay. All right. So uh, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you all for coming.